Welcome to our April Leadership Huddle. And I am going to turn it over to Jane to introduce our guest speaker for the day. All righty. Our guest speaker is Lisa Kunke and one of my favorite team leaders for Peace with Justice. <laughs> and she definitely has the heart for voting rights and any email she sends out to Peace with Justice that says, contact your representatives. <laughs> We're on it. So um, she's been a member of the church for about 20 years. You all know this stuff. Married to Kurt, uh, daughter, Annika, and she's a fabulous leader. So looking forward to your presentation, Lisa. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I know I'm probably talking to the choir here about voting because I'm sure most of you where all of you vote. So um, I, I just thought at the beginning, I would tell you how I got more interested in voting rights. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm never sure. Um, it was when Annika was in, started elementary school. She, I just realized how important it is to know who your leaders are at the lowest level because they make all the choices that affect you individually how the every you know your city councilman and the mayor and especially the Kansas legislature how they affect decisions you know supporting like funding schools and it just made me realize how important it is and that's when I really started paying attention and then I got more involved um, when Annika was in a high school, I was on the Shawnee Mission Area Council and we had legislative chairs that reported to us every month. The Shawnee Mission Area Council is kind of the PTA over the other PTAs. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but um, they do a lot of things to train PTA members, but it would really kind of open my eyes to how important it is to vote and pay attention to what's going on around you. So, I thought this morning I'd start with this little quiz about Kansas voting and oh. see how you all do. <laughs> I know there was going to be a test. <laughs> so Stacy's going to load it. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> all voting dates and times are mandated by the federal government. False. 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 Oh, you guys are good. It is true. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it is. It says all voting dates and times are managed by the federal government, actually established by a set election law. Okay. Number two. Oh, wait. Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. In, 19, eight, in 1845, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November became the official presidential election date. Why? To allow travel time to polls since Sunday is considered a day of worship. worship. Worked well for farmers due to transportation of crops to market Wednesday through Friday. So there you go. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Okay. Oh, and then I am. Okay. Nice. It's kind of loading slow. Yeah. Well, I, 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 have I to am click. too. I don't know how much you want to click. It's, it's all about me clicking. Do so you just want me to keep clicking? If I click, it releases. There we go. Which of the following is true? about Kansas and the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment. Let's see. When was it ratified? Because Kansas has not ratified it. Kansas was the fourth state. Kansas was the 40th state. Or Kansas was the first state to ratify the 19th Amendment. I'm going with so cool. <clears throat> I would say the fourth state. Yeah, I'm going with that also. I'm going with C. I'm going with D. And the fourth state is correct. Oh, <laughs> yay. There you go. Because well, Kansas had the first uh, female mayor, as I recall. Wow. Really? I yeah. didn't know. That. And it was kind of a joke. Her name was put on the ballot as a joke by the men uh, and in they town. Won. And she won. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Okay. okay, number three. Mm -hmm. 
Does True. someone vote in the U.S. prior if, to the 19th Amendment? True. 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 It says that it was first introduced in 1878 and 42 years later ratified in 1920. So this year the league had, or last year it was a 100 year anniversary. How? For the League of Women Voters. We had a big celebration. Oh yeah, this is the state one. Yep. There we go. Number four. Okay, which statement is not true to be eligible to vote in Kansas? I'm going with B. There's also a D. Oh, I'm waiting. <laughs> B. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys are good. It is B. Fortunately, some of the answers are logical. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily knowing the law, it just seems logical. <laughs> yeah, you can be, you have to be a citizen, be a resident. You don't have to be a resident for a specific time. Be at least 17 years old and 18 years old by election day not be disqualified by court due to mental incompetence and not be incarcerated or on parole or a felony conviction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, number five. Do I need to click again? Nope. Oh. Okay. Eligible False. must register false. election. There we go. False, yes. False. false. Sad, sadly, false. <laughs> false. You are right. You have to, up, but you have to be sure to update your registration to change any of your name, address, and your party affiliation. Okay, number six. Oh, good. This one's loaded. <clears throat> oh, good. When can a voter be changed to inactive or suspended status? <clears throat> B. I was going to say B is what I always thought. I think D. I, I think it's B. D. D. D or B to go with none of the Bees above. And dog. None of the above. Okay, it's B. Uh, After failing. Ooh. Are we playing for money? No. <laughs> nope. I just thought it would be kind of fun. Oh, okay. That didn't give us the answer. Ah. Because ah. where did they go? <laughs> there we go. Um. It's still there's a. There's more to load on here. Sure. I can't see all I see is the thing, so I have no idea. Is there Keep more? Clicking. Keep clicking. Oh, no. I think that's it. Okay. Next. Oh, disability centers. Okay. Now. Now it's City clerk. Okay. Schools. Oh my gosh. All right. <clears throat> This it goes along with the first, the other question. This yeah. is. Oh, this I'm is glad of the second one listed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think some states keep keep dead people on their rosters. <clears throat> yeah. You have a pretty good voting record in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I'd be dying to get off that roll. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, seven. No. no. no on polling place election day no no i wish we could but we can't is there any more on that page is everything loaded uh, it's loaded i think it is loaded yeah they have they mail out the uh ballot the voting the mail-in ballots 20 days before the election and then they start early voting 21 days before okay Okay. This is kind of dated, but for the governor's election in November 2018, what was the county's voter turnout percentage? A. Not A. <laughs> it can't be A. Uh, that's probably, I'm, sadly, it's probably A, but I'm going with B. D. I'm going go with D. D. B, boy. C. Oh, C. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Yay. Oh, really we're good. better than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're terrible. Wonder we have it. Still kind I of a sad percentage. You say the A is like, that would be high for like a primary. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's a hot primary number. I see what you're saying. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but the election was big. And then which group had the highest voter turnout in the presidential election in 2016? 26. A. 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 Okay. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay. Oh, maybe baby boomer. Maybe baby boomer. Oh, yeah, it's close. Oh, it's close. The silent generation. Yep. <laughs> then how did we hear from them? Because they voted. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> There's the probably, ages. Probably mail in ballots. <laughs> yeah. Nothing vocal. <laughs> interesting. Okay. I know it is. It's. I think it's really interesting. And then the twenty. Oh, that was a twenty. This was sixteen. Same question. Oh, percentage. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the millennial Gen Z was well. Might not have been old enough. <laughs> oh, there's the two thousand eight midterm. Yeah, there's the midterm. They're just really big into voting. <laughs> they are. Okay. Oh, wait. 2020. Hmm. To be continued. Okay. Where'd you go? Oh, where's number 10? Or 9 or 10? I guess it's 10. All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Cool. Okay. That's all of that. So does anybody have any questions or anything? Lisa, I have a question. Yeah. Are you aware currently um, at our state level, is there anything being discussed or considered about changing our election laws? You mean this session? This yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hang on a second. I do have something. I don't remember all the details, but there has been some interesting discussion. It's been kind of a wild session. So the House and Senate passed voter suppression bills HB 2183 and HB 2332 on April 8th, and they're headed to the governor's desk. So it's making it a crime for a person for return more than 10 mail-in ballots for other voters. This creates new crime without provisions, how it is tracked. So you can only read if, so like if you take your mail-in ballots, if you pick them up they're for friends and family, you can only return 10 at a time. I don't really see that as an issue because. Well, if you go if you go into a nursing home, yeah, and, if you, and you harvest fifty-five votes from people and and they allow you to vote for them, that's called it's ballot harvest, a, harvesting. It's not going to be a big issue for me because I just pick up friends and family. But for people that do go around and pick up, you know, like assisted living centers, it will be an issue for them, you know, to help people get them to the election office. Yeah. Or, or vote or vote or just take their ballot and vote for them. I don't know if there's if if I don't know if people do that. I have you, <laughs> no, I bless mean, you, Lisa. I love you. <laughs> um, up in, in Minnesota this past go round, Ilhan Omar had vote harvesters out just working their backsides off. Mm. But I mean, if they're in a assisted living they have a way to mail so i don't think anybody but the post office you know yeah. i mean yeah i just like i took, up. i mean i took um phyllis's last year for her because the mail situation was not good because mail was really slow uncertain, and, uncertain. Yeah. and uncertain and so she really wanted hers returned to the election office and so did yeah. we and so I just drove them out to the election office and dropped them in the slot out there. There was a line, two lines of cars dropping off mail-in ballots at the election office. So, and then let's see, the other one is. Well, it doesn't seem like the issue isn't, to me, the issue isn't dropping them off. The issue is what happens to that ballot before it gets put in the envelope and dropped off. Whether yeah. that that's really the issue and the law is not, it's 
it's one step away from what the real issue is, and that is unduly influencing people's votes and taking advantage of them. Right. And I don't know. How, I don't know how you. I don't know how you it. language that, but that's the issue. Yeah. Well, there's the, the second one. It says it's the other bill is making a misdemeanor for a candidate to assist any voter beyond their immediate family. This would include precinct committee men or women. Voters should be able to choose who they want to help with their ballots, and this could impact the ability for elderly or handicapped in group homes. Is that kind of yeah. what you were talking about? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So a question, people, question people that choice. really mentally maybe don't have the wherewithal to, to make the selections themselves, but they're still eligible voters. And so somebody goes in and goes, oh, you know, vote for do 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 do. I'll, I'll fill it out for you. Mm -hmm. not, not to worry. <clears throat> Lisa, you mentioned you, when you mentioned the legislation that had passed and was headed to the governor's desk, you, you said it was voter suppression legislation. Well, that's what this this is according to the League of Women Voters. Is that is that uh, suppression? Is that part of the title of the bill, or is that a no editorial comment on the part the of editorial the editorial comment? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then. The other thing they're doing is removing the Secretary of State's or any other elected official or court ability to, to allow additional time for ballots to return in case of emergency. So, like if there was an emergency, the Secretary of State wouldn't be able to issue more time for ballots to be mailed ahead of time or like the due dates, like ballots coming in, you know, after the due date, but postmarked with the right date. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, like COVID related, it's COVID right. related. It was mail mail difficulties related to decisions since last year. And then it says making it a felony for election offices to receive monies from any source beyond appropriation or fees. This could have a broader effects on underfunded county election offices. And then imposing strict requirements on mailing applications for advance ballots and who can send out applications. So that's the bills that they went to the house and then they'll go to the governor's office and it'll, it'll be up to her whether she vetoes it and all that. So it'll be interesting. There's a lot going on in the legislature this time, this, this session. <clears throat> Anybody else? What Thank you, it? Lisa. Oh, what was it that happened in Georgia that people are so upset about that they were did they pass a law that people had to have a driver's license to register to vote? Was that it? I don't really, I don't know all the things, but you had to have ID when you send back your mail-in ballot. Doesn't everyone have to do that anyway? Not in Kansas. I mean, you get a mail-in ballot sent to you and you just sign it. And then they do signature comparisons at the election office. I mm. thought we had to put our, our driver's license. We. Do we? I can't. You had to write write it on your, on your mail in. Yeah. If you mail it in, you've got to put that on. Right on the form, mm -hmm. not on the envelope. But on the envelope, you have to sign it. But on the form, you put your information on there. But then in Georgia, there, there are nineteen provisions that were part of this. I saw a breakdown. It's a long, long bill, but I saw mm -hmm. a breakdown of the nineteen key provisions, and there's quite an interesting list. Yeah, they say you know that it's. The early voting starts earlier, but that's the one. It's also the state where they can't take you food or water while you're in line. Well, well that means workers, the candidate can't can take them food and water. water. Oh, okay. The and election officials can provide food and water, but they don't want candidates coming along and basically, basically electioneering. I don't think so the language says I can't says go hand out water. I don't but think, I think, I think it's not too. candidate. I think it's any any person who is not who could possibly be representing a candidate, right. which is quite a bit different. But you can also give that to the election officials who put it out. So they're not saying they can't get food and water. They're just wanting it to come from the election officials. Even if I took it and donated it to the election officials, right. I can't personally do it, but the election officials can put it out was my understanding of what they did. The two well, alarming I things that I saw from that are one, that uh, the legislature has the capacity to override any county election office. That's the scary to take one. Yeah. To take over the results of the election, to review the results of the election. They're, require, they're shortening the amount of time in which it can be counted 
Uh, and I think the, the other one is that the other crazy part is that they are decreasing the number of uh, voter drop-off boxes in urban areas and actually are sort of increasing them in some rural areas, which means yeah. access to being able to drop your vote yeah. off has been significantly reduced in, in urban counties, which of course are primarily democratic. Yeah, I have to, I'm not a real expert on Georgia's <laughs> election law. I mean, there's a lot of, I think there's like 47 states that have election laws going through their legislature right now. So there's, I mean, there's a lot going on with elections, you know, after the past, you know, the presidential election. So and then I also have a PowerPoint on uh, how to be a more, what is it called? Can't remember. Informed. Oh, informed. Informed. Informed active voter. Can you see it now? <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. So this is from the League of Women Voters, and it's a nonpartisan political organization and encourages informed active participation in government and works to increase civic understanding of major public issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy. So that's their mission statement. And then go to the next one. Go to the next one, okay. And we can skip this because we're already into 2021, so. <laughs> okay, so it says, know what you're looking for. So I know when I'm looking at a candidate, <clears throat> the most important thing to me is not whether they're Republican or Democrat, but it's the political issues that are important to me. So that is the main reason that I vote for somebody. And it's, and then you also need to look at their leadership experience, like their work background and their character. I mean, that shows up a lot in these <laughs> last few elections. And then um, there, like I said, I like to, look at the issues, um, there's like Supreme Court, um, education. I really, education is really important to me, especially on a local level. And then, um, and then the taxes on food. I, uh, I think that's really important because Leewood has really the highest food tax around. I talked to Stephanie Clayton last, last time she had a Zoom meeting and she didn't think it was going to go away this year. So I think we're stuck with it for a while. And taxes, I mean, everybody has their own little issues that they're concerned about. And then next one, and then pick a campaign to study. Um, I think that's, I mean, on the local, I'm more, I mean, I'm more, uh, I know more about the local campaigns, you know, how they're, what they're doing than versus the, the, like the, like a U.S. Senator or, uh, or U.S. House representatives. And plus they, I mean, they're elected, you know, less often, I mean, not less often, but it's just their campaigns are bigger. And so I think you just need to, I think I feel, I put more effort into the local elections because they affect me more. Does that make sense? <clears throat> and then you can look at newspapers. Um, I love the Shawnee Mission Post and the Star. I think people, I think there's a lot of people that are unhappy with it right now, but um, I do like to read the, the Star and for their opinion, like their opinion when people write in. Okay, next one. Then television. I heard, I never <laughs> use this for elections. <laughs> Because that's a terrible picture. That, that, that's about how I feel. Yeah, sometimes when I'm watching. <laughs> that's what we were all driven to. <laughs> spill yeah, spill popcorn and a... I need snacks. It's like, is what were a, they thinking? I'm assuming that's a dark beer, isn't it? Is that the... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think there's a lot you can gain from watching television about elections. I mean, the... Unless it's the debates. Oh, the debates. Yes. I forgot about the I mean, debate. That yeah. could be a possibility. 
Yeah, but most of the tele the shows are biased and um, I just wouldn't pick them, you know, to <laughs> get your information from for elections. Okay, next I think one. it's important not to limit your information to one or another. Right. I, mean, I you think need it's a much lot. more important to be open to uh, hearing others. So, so these guys are on here, though. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I mean, you'd have to be careful with social media. If somebody posts something on Facebook or Twitter, you have to make sure that it's true i mean where'd they get the, where's their sources i mean where did this come from because there's so much that's not true on both on all these <laughs> platforms exactly and it's one an echo interesting. chamber yes one of, one of the interesting things that facebook did in the past election was <clears throat> send out messages to all of their participants um to vote today they sent it out knowing that democrats use social media more than republicans do and they sent it out at a time of day when more Democrat, far more Democrats were tuned in than Republicans based on what they know about you and me through our algorithm. And that was an interesting way to influence an election was to send out a get out the vote message at the proper time of day to influence, influence the group you wanted to influence. Hmm. Very, very subtle, very, very interesting. And I think a little bit nefarious, but it's there. There were a lot of things that were nefarious this past election. <laughs> I I don't use Facebook that much anymore, and I don't get my information from there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lisa, you. do you um, do you subscribe to the various newsletters that the um, that our legislative people send out? Do you pay attention to those? I can't hear you. You faded away. Yeah, you just, you just went slowly yeah. fading away. <laughs> That's very unusual. No. <laughs> you, How'd you do that? Like How'd I've, you do that? I've started subscribing to the newsletters that all of our various legislative people put out, trying to at least get a feel for who they are and how they speak. And do you do that? Do you find that I, useful? Yes. I, I get a lot of emails. Um, oh, there you are. Um, I, cause Stephanie Clayton is my legislator and on the house, she's my, and then um, Kelly Warren is my Senator. Uh, and so I haven't really signed up for her. Uh, I guess I just kind of forgot, but I get, um, I love going to Stephanie. She has a lot of uh, legislative coffees. Even now there's a lot of legislatures that do have coffees and you can do it through Zoom. They meet at the library. I know. Um, so who's your representative? Ann? Warren is our senator. Yeah. And who's your house representative? The name escapes me. I, I had hoped it would be Dirks, but she was defeated. So <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember the name of the woman who beat her. I can't, I can't recall it. Is it the physician? Mm, yeah. Yeah, it is. Jan, it is. Jan Rick's friend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the lady, the, she's a lady and she was a physician. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her name too. Yeah. Barbara Bowler? Barbara Bollier. Barbara, no, no, Bollier. Barbara Bollier was defeated. Oh, yeah, she, 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 oh, yeah. Lost. she lost. Oh, yeah. She lost to um, Roger, Roger Marshall. Marshall. Roger Marshall. Oh, and, uh, oh, that was for, know. yeah. That was for a yeah. Senate position for the state. So, so, yeah. Senator Wait. from the state. I would highly recommend getting your newsletter from your legislature because you, when you get to know your legislature, you can email them and ask them questions. You can text them and ask them questions. I mean, it's just, and plus, you know, when they have the, the Zoom legislative coffees and just the Zoom meetings for updates, you can ask them anything you want to ask them and they'll try to answer. I don't know if, Maybe that's just my, maybe that's just Stephanie, but she's been really awesome to get information. Responsive, from. been responsive. Yes. yes, very much so. Does anybody vary, else? And that's, and that's one of the reasons to vote for some and not vote for others because some are very non-communicative and others are like Stephanie apparently is very communicative and that's a reason to, to support them, I think. 
Right. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know a lot of the other ones and, you know, and how they respond to people because I have a good one. <laughs> there's, okay. there's some, there's some variety out there. That's for sure. Yeah. And there's a bunch of new people. So. Well, I can say that I remember Brandon Woodard coming to our door. Like he, yeah, knocked he's good. Door. I like him. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go on to the next? Oh, sure. Okay. Are we done with websites or go to the next? No. One? So okay. this website, this 411.org is really wonderful. If you go there, there's a map of the United States on the website at the, on the homepage and you can click on any state and you can get all the voting information you've ever wanted from each state. So if you have any questions about other states, how their voting works or our state, there's just a wealth of information in there about voting. It's super easy. And then I think the next um, slide is ballot, Ballotpedia. This is really good too. It gives you lots of information on when there are votes, who voted for what? Because it's really, and it's another thing I like to do is see how the legislature votes after they've been, after they've had a huge vote for the House. You know, once it goes to the House, then it has to go to the Senate. And I always like to see how my legislature votes, yay or nay. And you can, if you go to the, if you go to their website, you can, they should have their information on there, their voting record on yays and nays and which bill. It kind of gets confusing to watch certain bills, you know, because it's like HB something here and then it'll move to the Senate side and it'll SB something. I mean, it gets kind of, so you just kind of have to follow the subject from one, from the House to the Senate and then see if it makes it out of the Senate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the next website is factcheck.org. I use this a lot. Just go in there and ask a question if you're not sure about something. And the next one, PolitiFact. I use this a little, I mean, I'm not really into this one, but it doesn't mean it's not bad or not good. So anyway, it's a one to keep in mind. And then the next one. And then... Whenever you, uh, you're you researching somebody, just gather all your information, campaign flyers. I know we all get a ton of those and the coffees and newspaper and then letters to the editor. And then the next one. And then evaluate their stand on issues. And the next one. And then con consider their leadership abilities and character, their campaign style and their career history, which kind of looks, looks back at their, what they did before they went into politics, community involvement. I mean, it's really good to see. Um, I know Stephanie does a lot of service projects and she puts it on her Facebook page and on Twitter. So it's good to see, you know, our leaders doing community service their leadership experience, and then if they've had any military roles. Okay, the next one. And then learn the views of others. The Kansas City Star, like I said, I still get the paper and, and the mainstream coalition pack. I like them. They have, there's a mainstream coalition and then the pack is, it's, it's the political side of the mainstream coalition. And so you have to be careful when you're on there. You wanna make sure you're on the right one and not because the mainstream is nonpartisan, but then the PAC is political. And then watch who donates to campaigns. And I follow certain columnists, you know, um, even on Twitter, I like to, I follow certain column people that, you know, the writers for New York Times and the Post, there's just certain ones that I like and can get information from. And then opinion polls. I don't really listen to those anymore because they never work out. I mean, they never, it just never, I don't know who does the polls or how they do the polls, but it just doesn't seem to show well, that's that your That's your opinion. Yeah. I know. But I, I mean, you guys might pay attention to it, but I just don't 
follow them. So, <laughs> okay, next one. And then sorting out your research, you know, you have to look again, what's important to you and then their leadership and character. Okay, next one. I don't know what this, next one. <laughs> okay, and then encourage informed and active participants. Okay, anyway, this is just the League of Women Voters, you know, wanting you to become a member. So the other thing I was gonna tell you about is judges. I never know what to do when there's a bunch of judges <laughs> That's hard. on the ballot because I don't want to have to go in there and research every one of them. But um, I have a friend from book. It's a dad from Brookwood. He's an attorney. And he told me it's like the best thing he goes, he goes, all these people have worked really hard to get to these judge positions. And he goes, you should um, just, you know, not vote them out of office. Mm -hmm. you, know, if, you know, if you know one that's not, that you, you know, personally that's not doing a good job, then you could vote not to retain that judge. But I thought that was really good advice from somebody that is a lawyer. But, but there is always been somewhat of, if I haven't heard the judge's name before, that's <laughs> probably a good thing. <laughs> right, very true. I think Barbara's exactly right. Unless you've heard some right. really negative information about a, a judge. They're probably doing a good job because right. if you search, if you search for negatives, you will find them. There's yes. always someone who's been wrong. <laughs> but uh, generally speaking, I support them. Yes. Generally, the bar association also rates them. Right. So that's another place to, you can look. Oh, that's good. You, you can, if you want to get deep, you know, if you want to dig deeper, you can do that. Yeah, that's. Thank you, Barb. Especially if it's a name, it's like I've heard that name before, but you know, it could have been because of a good thing. So I'll look at the bar right. and see what. What they yeah, have to say. The most important thing is to, you know, look at your ballot and don't just vote for anybody. I mean, really know who you're voting for and what they represent. Anybody else have any questions? I have one question, Lisa. When you go to these coffees on Zoom or in person, are there a lot of people there, like five people or a hundred people? Oh, no, there's um, on Zoom, there's, because I do, I did um, Stephanie's and then I've done other, like, they'll do like, there'll be like four of them. And there's maybe 20 people. Mm. When they have them, they actually have them in the libraries during non-COVID. There'd be like 45 to 50 okay. people crammed into the library. Wow. Yeah. And it's always... I mean, they pass out, the League of Women Voters passes out cards to people and they take questions and each person answers. It's, it's a really good way to learn about your legislature, legislators. I really like it. And getting their newsletter. Mm -hmm. And you can like stalk them, you know. <laughs> okay. Follow them on, yeah, sure. You know, follow them on Facebook or follow they them. We are on recording this, aren't we? I know. Yes. <laughs> I, kind yeah, of did that with I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a stalker. No. I followed Sheree Stevens and I kind of stalked Foster her. Stalker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, just like find out as much as you can about them. And, you know, their websites are a good place to look. And, um, you know, and even those water district questions and all those ones you're like, oh my gosh, who do I vote for? There is information out there about who to vote for. I mean, like what they stand for each person. So you just kind of have, and if you have any questions, you can always email me and I can, I can tell you if I found anything and I'll share it with you. I mean, I'm happy to like share information about voting and you know, what people stand. I mean, this person versus that person. So what's our, what's our next election, Lisa? Um, I think there's one in August and I think the big thing is the abortion amendment because the, earlier this year, they passed, it passed the Senate to be on the ballot in Kansas because, uh, I can't remember 
it's supposed to be in April, but they planned it. They moved it to August, the Senate. So that's just one to watch. And then the next big one is 2022, because that'll be for the House and Senate. Who's going, I mean, coming, going. The municipal elections next uh, November. Pardon me? Municipal elections next November, perhaps? I'm not sure. Sorry, I don't know. Well, there's a mayoral election coming up in Overland Park. Is that? Municipal. When is that? Is that November, I think? I mean, campaigning has started. Usually no, no, the second, first Tuesday. First Tuesday. Second November. Tuesday after the first Tuesday in November. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that's the one Kurt Skook is going to be in, right? Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. And yep. several other people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, several other people. I just know. Will Kurt there Skook. be other names on that? Yeah, there's a, I can't pronounce the other guy's name. <laughs> there are there's at least two guy. other guys. Ferris yeah. Ferrisati. Yes, him. I don't know. Oh, Lisa, one, one, speaking of that one, um, one way to get a feel for the candidates is like the Overland Park um, City Council meetings are all right. streamed live. So you could watch a council meeting. We went to one that was a, we actually went to one that was sort of contentious <laughs> and it was really interesting to watch all the councilmen and how they behaved in the meeting and the kinds of questions they asked. So you can kind of get a feel for their character um, doing that. Yeah, it was, it was fascinating. And it, it made me feel certain ways about certain people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in other ways about certain other people. It was interesting. I mean, who thought watching elect i mean small elections and stuff would be so fascinating but it is yes <laughs> yeah anyway that's all i have would well, you want to share that the trusted sources picture oh yeah oh yeah 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 thanks stacy i forgot yeah. here we go is it big this enough from the missouri where did i do with that oh yeah the, the source is from Names derived from University of Missouri Journalism Institute trust, Trustworthiness Survey. And so I thought this would be interesting to you guys. The least and most trusted news sources. So um, if you look on here, uh, Occupy Democrats is the least trusted <laughs> and The Economist is the most trusted. Oh, Followed by Public Television, Reuters, BBC, NPR, PBS, The Guardian, The Wall Street Journal. Those are all highly trusted versus, you know, BuzzFeed, Breitbart, oh, social media in general got the not trusted <laughs> and Infowars yeah. and Fox. I'm and actually Fox. amazed that the main three networks are in there. I know they're kind of, they're not on the good side, yeah. <laughs> the trusted side. Huh. This was this is a poll, so you could research who exactly participated in the poll. Um, how they drew their sample and asked their questions and all. I that. thought mm -hmm. all I know is where it came from a University of Missouri Journalism Institute. Okay. Survey. All right, that's, that's all. But I can probably find out more if you want me to. I have to share my own bias is that I've always uh, I've always found it much more interesting to hear news about our country from from news sources that are outside our country. Mm -hmm. Oh, like the BBC. See? You like BBC? BBC's been, BBC's been good that way. Occasionally, there are a few others you'll encounter that think it for two things I appreciate about it is that it, you know, there are times I feel like I'm navel gazing when I'm looking at American political <laughs> reviews and, uh, and to have actually a global perspective about what's important in the world today is helpful. That sometimes we're not always the most important thing in the world today. Right, right. I agree. It's <laughs> probably a good thing for us as individuals to remember as well. But <laughs> so what off again, on again, off again, subscriber to The Economist. And I certainly agree that they are a very a good source. Yeah. But I just right. can't read. I can't read them. They every there's there's one a week, and they're very comprehensive. And it's a it's a wonderful magazine. But boy, they just pile up here. <laughs> so I'm you getting ready to renew my my subscription after a lapse of about two months. 
<laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to grit my teeth and go after it again. But you need to find the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And when the library reopens, though, I highly recommend going to the Economist. It's a great mag. Well, good. Thank you. Anybody else? What about Loud Light? Oh, I like Loud Light. I, it's, I mean, basically the, the, the main, the guy that leads Loud Light is Davis Hammett. He is a really funny, knowledgeable person about all things Kansas legislature. He is gay and he's the one, he came from New York and he bought the house from, bought a house across from, what's that Baptist church that- uh, protested? Westboro. Yes, Westboro. Oh yeah. <laughs> he bought the house across from them and painted it in a rainbow colors. Oh. <laughs> and he does, I, so I get his, I, his weekly, not, his emails, I, I get his correspondence, but when the legislature starts its session in, in the middle of winter or after January, he sends out a weekly summary and he summarizes everything the legislature has done in five minutes. And it's just amazing <laughs> how much you can know in five minutes. And he is just, I would highly recommend it. It's called loudlight.com. And he's very entertaining, but you learn a lot too. Is that what you think, Jane? That's what I think. I mean, that's <laughs> at least it keeps me on the ball what's going on that week fast. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's I, really easy to watch too because he is very humorous <laughs> and very young. So there's a national piece that's put out by the New York Times called The Flip Side. Oh, Have yeah. Have you ever seen that? No. It, it's a. Uh, what it does is it comes out often. I mean, you can spend a lot of time. It's emailed to you. And what they do is they uh, they present whatever the issue is that particular day that's being discussed. And then they quote like eight or nine uh, brief paragraph long positions from people on one side. Usually they do a blue and red. And then they share positions from people who are in power and make decisions about these things most of the time uh, view from the other side. Some of them are also political commentators who have their own bent. But so you understand that you're hearing a perspective from somebody who has a particular way of thinking. But they you hear both sides and they always end with some kind of fun little thing at the end, some <laughs> cute picture, some cute animal story. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a it's a thing called the flip side and it's really intended for you to to consider every issue as it goes through from from a variety of perspectives that are shared that are currently shared right now as those things are being discussed oh i'm gonna have to get that one now there's something else i can read <laughs> yeah. there you go yeah if you want to read there's a lot of Lisa, opportunities out there oh there's just a lot of stuff to read is there any way that you can email that chart on best and least yes reliable sources oh that'd be a good idea yeah I would like to have that. Okay. It's, yeah, I have it saved on my computer. I had to send it to Stacy so she could share it. I'm not very good at the Zoom thing. So put it on the Google Drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is on the Google Drive. You want me to it's on the Google Drive? Oh, there you are. There we go. We got it. Then I'll put it you don't have flip. access to the Google Drive. I can then add I'll you to it. put it on my flip phone, and who knows what will happen to it then. <laughs> Yeah. Do you really have a flip phone? He, yes. he does. Yes. Uh, Smith, he needs Smith a flip side. keeps coming after it, but they're not getting it. Yes, so you guys need to not to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Is that your line? <laughs> so your homework is you need to find out who your legislators are, legislators are, and then if you have issues you want to talk about, just email them. They they all or you can call them. I mean. That's the best way to find out your answers if you want to know what's going on in your district. <laughs> Here's anybody quick, wants so much, Lisa. This was good. Yes. Did Thank you. you. Here's a quick Enjoy personal it. update for those of you who are on early. Uh -huh. I shared oh. that I wasn't going to my grandson's football game. Oh, yeah. football uh -oh. game. He had two interceptions, one running touchdown, two passing touchdowns. <gasps> wow. <laughs> 
How old is he? And they won. He's, 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 oh, is he eight? No, no, oh, yeah, he's eight now. <laughs> he's the future. Incredibly, Here he's incredibly already fast. being recruited by KU. <laughs> he's, he is fast. I mean, it's so funny when you go to the games. Like last, I went to the last game. I made it to the last one. It was on a Saturday, or it was late so Sunday afternoon. And uh, he ran, he, he caught one touchdown and ran for two. But when he runs, it is ridiculous. He runs, it's like watching, you know, when Tyreek Hill cuts back and you say, no, don't go back. You know, he does that. He runs a thousand yards to go 10, you know, it's so, it's so fun to watch him. It's hilarious. Anyway, Lois is watching on my oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. Thank you, Lisa. This is great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. you inspire me. For yes, the... I appreciate your, your out Thank there you, doing Lisa. that. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks Lisa. for coming. The, I know. Um, First female mayor was elected in 1887 in Argonia, wow. Kansas. Lisa, and she what, was, she was put on as a prank you because say? they thought she would lose massively and embarrass women by some men put her on. But they didn't, you didn't know who was on the ballot till the day of the election back then. <laughs> oh. And the somebody she confirmed that she would run. And so the um, women's Christian Temperance Union all abandoned who they were going to vote for and voted for her and a lot of the republicans voted for her and she <laughs> agreed that she would serve wow and good she became the she won by two-thirds majority <laughs> wow she's still what serving said, what i said was did you ever run for an office yeah oh no i'd vote for you i i do not like talking in front of people but you care so much about the issue. what are we chopped liver no no it's, i don't like no, I'm just like the <laughs> little worker bee at the bottom. <laughs> Campaign manager then. Yeah, there you go. Be some policy easy. writer. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate, appreciate your efforts. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank well, you. thanks for coming. Okay. Thank well, it's good to see everybody without masks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Bye, Bye. Lisa.